Crowley said, we are free to the point of choice. And thereafter, we are ruled by our choices. Welcome to the Psychologist Andy TV with me, Dr. Blessing Ntamu. It's a pleasure to be here with you to share some psychological facts with you. If this is your first time on the Psychologist Andy TV, kindly click on the subscribe button and hop on with us on this learning train. Today, I'm going to be talking about the neuroscience of addiction, otherwise titled why you should not experiment with psychoactive substances, or why you should not experiment with drugs. When I talk about drugs in this video, I'm actually talking about psychoactive drugs. And psychoactive drugs are chemical preparations, the chemical substances that when ingested into our bodies, alter the physiology of our brains. So they alter the state of our nervous system. Psychoactive drugs are drugs that when taken into our system or chemical preparations, chemical substances that when taken into our system alter the state of the nervous system. I'm talking about substances like cocaine, like marijuana, like nicotine, like alcohol, like a heroin, like opioids, like amphetamines, like tramadol. All of these substances, when ingested into our system, they alter the physiology of the nervous system. How do they do this? Most of them do this actually by mimicking the natural neurotransmitters that our bodies produce. In this video, we're going to talk about two major things. The first thing is explaining <clears throat> two terms, addiction and dependence, drug dependence or substance dependence in very simple terms. Thereafter, I'm going to try to explain to you the neuroscience of addiction, how these drugs that we take into our system affect our nervous system, how they alter our brain physiology, and how addiction comes about. So let's get on. Now, the first thing is, what is addiction? Now, addiction is a state in which an individual continues to seek and consume a psychoactive substance in spite of being aware of the negative consequences of this substance use on the system and in spite of wanting to stop the consumption of this psychoactive substance. So a state in which you actively seek and consume a drug or a psychoactive substance in spite of being aware of the negative consequences and in spite of wanting to stop. So at this point, you're hooked, you're helpless. It's an impulsive behavior. As a matter of fact, addiction is an obsessive compulsive disorder. You're helpless. You obsessively and compulsively engage in this drug seeking and drug consuming behavior. Even when you know how bad this drug is for your system, even when you want to stop, that is addiction. Now, what about drug dependence? When you're dependent on a psychoactive drug, what it means is that your body has developed a tolerance for this drug. So each time you consume this drug, you have to consume um, continuously larger amounts of this drug to experience the euphoric feelings that you seek because your body has developed a tolerance for this drug. So you, you continuously uh, consume a higher amount so until you get to a point where when you take this drug, you don't even feel the euphoric feelings again. So many People living with substance use disorder will tell you that they're consuming this drug not to feel euphoria, but to feel normal. Because now for them to function normally, for them to carry on with their daily activities normally, they have to consume this drug. What a place to be. I'm sure you don't want to be in that place. That is why I think you should not start experimenting with drugs at all. Now the second uh, sign of drug dependence is that when you stop taking this drug, when you stop the consumption of this drug, there are usually withdrawal symptoms. Okay, so you experience some withdrawal symptoms. And uh, quite uh, many people are not aware that some of these withdrawal symptoms can be fatal. There are some drugs that you can take and then you can deal with the withdrawal symptoms on your own. You know, but for some other drugs, including very common drugs, withdrawal symptoms are so uh, serious that they could be fatal and you may not be able to deal with them on your own. For instance, the most common 
drug of use, psychoactive substance that we consume, alcohol, has very terrible withdrawal symptoms. And most times, in fact, all the time you need, if you are really dependent on that drug, you would need a professional, an expert, you need a pharmacologist, you need a psychiatrist to help you deal with your dependence. Because when the withdrawal symptoms come, if they are not properly dealt with, they could be fatal. You could die. Okay. Now let's look at the neuroscience of addiction. How does this drug, do these drugs affect your brain to the point that you become addicted or you become dependent on this drug? Now this is what happens. For all of the pleasurable activities that we engage in, the part of our brain known as the nucleus accumbens releases some amount of dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is responsible for helping us to feel pleasure. So for all of the activities like eating, like sex, like spending time with a friend, natural activities that we engage in, a small quantity of uh, dopamine is released from our nucleus accumbens that helps us enjoy this activity. Now why is this? This is because our body is trying to communicate to us that these activities are pleasurable and that they are actually necessary for our existence. So that's the body's way of preserving our existence and preserving our species from extinction. So when you eat food, food is necessary for your existence. So your body communicates with you through the release of little quantities of dopamine that this activity is pleasurable and is necessary for your existence. Your existence is dependent on this activity and this makes you engage in the activity again. When you have sex, sex is necessary for the preservation of our species. So what the body does is that the nucleus accumbens will release a little quantity of dopamine to make you experience pleasure and communicate with you that this activity is necessary for your existence. It is pleasurable. So you should engage in this activity again and again. Now, with natural pleasurable activities, what happens is that when you engage in this activity continuously, it gets to a point where... There's a switch off. So your body switches off the system and you no longer feel pleasure. Now with the psychoactive substances that we consume, they also lead to the release of dopamine. Now the psychoactive substances that we consume must also lead to the release of dopamine. However, in comparison with the quantities of dopamine released when we engage in natural activities, it's a huge amount of dopamine that is released when we take in psychoactive drugs. Almost up to a thousand times more dopamine is released when you take a psychoactive drug. Now what happens is that when you inject the, you ingest these psychoactive drugs, your brain is flooded with dopamine. The synapses are flooded with dopamine. And then there's an imbalance created in the brain. And now our nervous system, the brain, is created in such a way that it resists imbalances. Whenever there's an imbalance, it tries to compensate with it some way or the other to return the brain to a state of homeostasis, a state of balance. So when your system is flooded with dopamine because of these psychoactive drugs that you've ingested, the brain compensates by causing a reduction in dopamine receptor cells in the stratum, in the part of the brain known as the stratum. There's a reduction in dopamine receptor cells. Now this creates a balance. So the effect of this flooding of your synapses or your brain with dopamine is no longer felt. Now, when the effect of this drug wears away, because of the dopamine receptor cells that have been reduced, there's a drop in the level. So there's like a deficiency. And then you begin to crave this drug because the brain again has to restore itself to a state of homeostasis. So you take the drug, the synapses, the brain is flooded with dopamine. Uh, the brain compensates for this by reducing dopamine receptor cells. The effect of the drug wears away. There's a drop in the level below homeostasis. You crave this drug, you take more of it, and then there's a flooding and the cycle continues. Now, as this continues to happen, your brain is rewired. Your brain is rewired to such an extent that it adjusts to this substance. You need to take this substance to feel normal and you need to take an increasingly higher amount of this substance. So there's tolerance created for this substance. So that is, you're now dependent on this drug. So each time there's a drop you take and even when you now try to stop taking this drug, 
Your brain has been rewired and it takes a long time for this rewiring to be reversed. So even when you stop taking this drug for almost a decade, your brain remains in that state. That's why from time to time you feel these cravings and then there's a return to use. What many people call relapse. If care is not taken because your brain is rewired and there will always be these cravings. You see, this is why we must not experiment with psychoactive substances at all. And uh, I think it's, it's, you should note that you don't have to take these drugs for a long period to become addicted or become dependent on these drugs. Depending on your physiology and the kind of drug, a few times of use of psychoactive drug can actually get you dependent on this drug. Now, this situation is even worse for adolescents, for teenagers. Because of the fact that their brain is still undergoing development, they get easily dependent on these, on these drugs, easily addicted to these drugs. That is why you should not experiment with psychoactive drugs. Now, maybe we need to listen to the testimonies of people living with substance use disorder to know what I'm talking about. Most of them are helpless. Most of them are living in... Um, in a very pitiful situation they do not want to continue taking this drug they want to stop they do not like the effect of this drug on their system they do not like how socially undesirable most of these drugs make them look and feel but they cannot stop they cannot help themselves and so they are hooked onto this drug they need help and most of them will tell you this is not a life they wish for anyone at all you know, so you don't want to get to that point. When once you become dependent on the drug, you're like a prisoner in your own body. You can't help yourself. You can set yourself free. You usually need external help to set yourself free. And it's not a very simple process. This is why I do not think you should experiment with a psychoactive drug. So after you've gone through this, after you now understand, you know, the physiology of uh, addiction, the neuroscience of addiction, I'll ask you this question. Should you experiment with psychoactive substances? If you ask me, the answer is no. So for you young people out there, no matter who it is trying to convince you to experiment with psychoactive substances, is it your peers, is it an adult, say no and stand with it because you're going to get into a helpless and a devastating situation. Now, some adults actually do um, make younger people consume psychoactive substances because they want to have an advantage over them. Now, I was, whilst I was doing my course on addiction medicine, I actually uh, read the testimonies of a lot of people living with substance use disorder. And there was a particularly very touching story of a young teenage girl of about 13 years old who was introduced to drug use, psychoactive substance use, by her father. And the story of that girl is heartbreaking. She went through terrible experiences because of the substance use. So teenagers, please, even adults out there, do not experiment with drugs. Whatever the situation in your life, taking drugs is not a good way to cope. If you're undergoing stress, there are constructive coping mechanisms for dealing with stress. Whatever it is, is it a heartbreak? Is it whatever it is you're going through? There are better ways to deal with what you're going through than taking psychoactive substances. When you take psychoactive substances, you're not solving the problem, but you're creating another problem. It's been an exciting time with you here. And my parting words for you is, please do not experiment with psychoactive substances. Do not get hooked on. Do not become a prisoner. Enjoy your freedom and spread the love and laughter everywhere you go. Have a beautiful day out there today.